CNC ported LS3 heads versus CNC ported LS7 heads. Who's going to win? Hello everybody, Armature Holder and welcome to the channel. We have a shootout today. We've got LS3 heads versus LS7 heads and also we have a 427 stroker. We got high compression, we got a high RPM intake manifold. We have everything that we need to take full advantage of both of these heads. Ported LS3, ported LS7, which one makes more power? Let's find out. Okay guys, here it is, finally our comparison between the LS7 heads and LS3 heads, neither one of which are stock, both of them are CNC ported, so it should be a pretty good shootout. So let's take a look first at our test motor, obviously the test motor is going to have an effect on the ultimate result, so you guys let me know, did the test motor actually favor one set of heads over the other <laughs> right off the bat? This is an LS7 short block, so does that mean the LS7 heads are going to do better? But it's an LS7 427 inch motor, uh, 425 bore, 4 inch stroke. It has been converted from the LS7 dry sumpish uh, oiling system over to a traditional wet sump for testing on the dyno. It also was upgraded with a set of Molly Forge flat top pistons with 2cc valve relief so they could run lots of different camshafts in this thing. We equipped this thing with a camshaft from Brian Tui Racing. Obviously, this camshaft with this 1.8 rocker using the LS7 heads 662 lift, a 246-260X duration, and 111 degree lobe separation angle. This was their stage four, uh, probably a stage four LS7 camshaft. The heads that we put on here were LS7 heads. They've been given the once over by the guys at Bischoff Racing who know a thing or two about how to make power. So they were uh, further ported by the guys at Bischoff. These things were also milled. So these things came down to a 64cc chamber, which is very good. Uh, added compression. This thing was over 12 and a half to 1 with that compression ratio. We ran this thing with a Brian Tooley Racing Trinity intake manifold, so high RPM where we're making power, give this thing a chance to rev. Had a 105 millimeter uh, throttle body on it, or, or 100, yeah, 105 millimeter throttle body. It um, had inch and 7 eighths headers, long tube headers. James was uh, controlling this thing using a Haltech EFI system. It was run on E85, so it had plenty of octane, you know, to, to make good power with. This thing also had, because it had LS7 heads, it had the 1.8 LS7 roller rockers on it. And so equipped, our combination produced 722 horsepower out there at 71, 7200. It was all 721, 722 for about 300, 300 or 400 RPM there. And peak torque checked in at 581 foot-pounds out here at 58 to 5900 RPM. So it did really well. So now let's find out how well it compares to the LS3 heads. And those particular heads were the LS3 CNC port heads from the guys at TrickFlow. Okay, here we have it, the, the dyno results of the LS7 versus the LS3, and you can see, first thing, they made almost identical power within the decimal point of one horsepower, so we're going to call that exactly the same. The one thing you will notice, if you take a look at the red here on the, on the graph, that's the LS3 heads. So the LS3 heads made more average power from 3,000 up to just past 6,000 RPM, where after that they both made the same power. So... <laughs> right, and these are the TrickFlow 255 heads. They had been milled. They had a 63 cc chamber, so one cc. You guys can argue one cc back and forth, but let's talk about the important parts of this equation because there are a lot of things that uh, illustrated why one might be better than the other. So first of all, we have about the same intake port volume starting off: 255 for the LS3 head, 259 for the for the LS7 heads. Now these were um, 
the L7 heads were further ported, so it probably has more port volume. I'm going to try to do a live feed and give you guys airflow data on both of them and actual port volumes and stuff, and we can talk about that. But we know that the chamber volumes are the same. The exhaust uh, port volumes are similar going in, 86 and 87 cc's. The intake valve, the LS7 has a bigger intake valve, a 2165 for the LS3 and a 2200 or 2205 for the LS7 head. Exhaust valves are similar. Uh, here's where things get interesting, and, and that is the valve position, like the valve position in the head. Both of these heads share the same intake valve position, so they both have a stock LS7 valve position. But on the exhaust side, the uh, 255 triclo heads have an LS3 valve position, it's moved in toward the intake valve more, and actually the exhaust flow is better on the LS3 head than it is on the LS7 head, because the LS7 valve is moved out toward the chamber wall, which is not a good position, it actually hurts flow. Uh, combustion chambers were the same, 63 to 64 cc's. We saw that. Both of them are 12 degree heads. On the valve uh, material, the LS7 head had titanium valves. So it had a lot lighter valves than the LS3 because the Triclo LS3s have stainless steel valves. So they're fairly heavy. 113 grams versus 77 for the Triclo head. So big change in valve uh, weight. Also for rockers, the LS3 was run with 1.7 rockers. And the, and the LS7 was run with 1.8 rockers. So we had a change in lift for both of these. This camshaft run with the LS7 1.8 rockers was 662 lift. That dropped down to 625 lift for the LS3 head. So if anything, <laughs> bigger valves, more head flow from that ported LS7 head, and more lift, the LS7s should have made more power. So let me know in the comments, why do you think these LS7 heads didn't make more power? And I'll give you a hint, when we do the live feed, we talk about the airflow and we're gonna correlate that to valve size, there's a little something called coefficient of discharge that we'll probably also be talking about. So let me know if you think that was responsible. But now let's take a look at one final test that James ran, which is very, very cool. And something I always like to do when I have intake manifolds that allow me to remove the lid. So let's get rid of all the airflow restriction and also turn our intake manifold into an IR manifold. And he did it even cooler. Okay, now let's take a look at another very cool test that James ran was at, at Brian Tooley Racing. And what they did was turn their Trinity intake manifold into an IR manifold. I'll show you a photo here of what they did. They basically just eliminated the plenum. Now, normally when I do this kind of testing and when James has done it in the past, something like this would be easily done with something like an equalizer. I did it with an old Ford FR500. You could do it with a high ram. I did it with one of the carbon uh, PTR intake manifolds. And what you do is if you want to run it as an IR manifold or get rid of the throttle body and lid, that's exactly what you do. You you go to wide open throttle and then you simply remove the lid and get it out of the way on a drive-by wire throttle body even easier you don't, you don't have any mechanical connection no cable basically attached to the throttle body you just lift it out of the way and then let it run through its dyno cycle all the way up from one rpm to another rpm essentially at wide open throttle because that's where it is and then you just shut the dyno off at the end kill the ignition and then everything then you have a complete run just like we have here but in this instance because the runners overlap inside the plenum, James wasn't able to just simply lift off the plenum and get it out of the way. So he had to actually start this motor with this IR setup open fully at wide open throttle. So with a little bit of uh, dyno servo trickery, he was able to get this thing started and running basically at wide open throttle, load it down, release it, let it run all the way through its RPM range, and then, then obviously adjust for the uh, extra fuel that was necessary to supply the additional power, because this thing went from 722 horsepower up to 748 horsepower just using an IR manifold. So let me know what you guys think. I'm sure all the LS7 guys are gonna say, yeah, that's what was holding it back. It needed more intake manifold. The throttle body was holding the LS7 stuff back from making more power. Or, <laughs> here's the other thing, because doing this, getting rid of the common plenum does two things. One, it does eliminate the throttle body as any sort of restriction. So if you do have a restriction, we'll see that as a KPA reading on the, on the, from the map sensor. But if you do have a restriction, obviously this would eliminate that. The other thing that this does, and it does something that changes the, the effective design of the intake manifold, it turns this into a common plenum manifold, which has a resonance frequency, into an 
individual runner manifold. So every uh, cylinder is breathing basically from an open, like unrestricted <laughs> plenum volume. And so that definitely changes the way that the motor runs. We see a lot of IR stack injections and those kinds of things. This one even got rid of that part of it, got rid of the throttle plate. So you have maximum flow through the runners. You have no common plenum. And we saw lots and lots of power. I'm Richard Oldner. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Please make sure to comment. Let me know what happened on this LS3 versus LS7 head test. Please let me know and I'll keep testing.